Here over there, Joe Lunchbox. Thank you. And today we have landed right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. But this isn't our destination, no. We're just waiting for our ride to our destination. Because mm -hmm. we're about to go to Boulder City, Nevada. But not just any ride. Do you want to tell them what it is, Joy? I think you should. All right, I'll tell them. We're actually waiting for a hearse to come pick us up to go to an attraction I've been wanting to go to for a while now. It's called Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. And we got a special evening package where it's called the VIP, oh, the RIP package. Sorry, I'm used to. You have to be a VIP to take the RIP package. Sort of. Okay. Um, yeah, so a hearse is gonna pick us up, drive us to the museum, so we'll be there by midnight, so we have a midnight tour of the museum, and it's personally guided by Tom Devlin himself. So it's gonna be pretty exciting, so step right up. Let's go for this ride. I think I see our ride coming. Do you see it, Joy? I do, actually. <laughs> I see it, too. The casket on top of that car, all these people waiting for their Ubers, <laughs> and that is our ride coming through. Joy, you're riding in a hearse for the first time. I know. Don't worry, it won't be your last. <laughs> yeah, is this your first time riding in a hearse? Yeah. Yes. At least this time you'll remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to share the experience. Yeah, it's oh. cool. Have that for a hearse. Everything you'd be in a party hearse? <laughs> I don't think Stephanie's people would appreciate it because they're not living in her hearse. No, they're huh. not. <laughs> crushed like a uh, Power Wheels Jeep and nice. painted up like Jurassic Park and put it under his foot. <laughs> yes. And then I've, uh, I'm rewiring him so he can be hooked to a bill acceptor so you put a dollar in him and he roars Whoa. and screams and tail goes and he moves and he blinks. Uh, and I took the saddle off. He used to be a ride. He actually used to sit up on the mm -hmm. I took the saddle off him. So. I see you. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Come on over. For a small fee, so, Zoltar will give you a wealth of wisdom. All Zoltars are made here in Boulder City. Yeah. Which is a super weird little hidden secret. I put this information about it just because, like, the guys at Characters Unlimited, they don't advertise this. On every machine, almost, there's a little one of these cards that says Boulder City. Oh, uh -huh. And that's how I knew when I moved here that they were here. And I, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. When I moved to... Uh, LA. I went to a makeup school. From that makeup school, I took beauty classes. And when it came time to do like the full fledged effects thing, the thing I moved to LA for, because I was like a stinky, grubby punk rocker that wanted to make monsters and not do beauty makeup, uh, they told me there wasn't enough um, seats in the class. Like, there was nobody signed up except for me to do movies like Scorpion King, Terminator 3, Daredevil, Red Dragon, uh, Charlie's Angels 2. I did all of season nine of um, X Files, the first three seasons of CSI Miami, like the biggest work of my entire life. And so the school called back and was like, "Oh, your effects class is ready." And I was like, "I'm on the back lot at Universal. That's not. I don't need to go to school anymore." I think so. But from that experience, I didn't ever register how big of a deal it was. I thought, you know, I was just a kid from Pennsylvania, moved to Hollywood, I'm working on Hollywood movies. I always kind of thought that's just what you do. Like you show up and you get a job and here you go, bingo, bingo. But uh, I never wanted to do those huge movies. I wanted to make stuff like Trauma and Full Moon. Mm -hmm. right. Like the low budget kind of punk rock side of filmmaking was what I was super into. And so uh, in 2002, I started my own company called 1313 FX and I dove straight into low budget horror. My first movie was a Fangoria film called Joshua, and then from there it just goes and goes and goes. And like I said, I checked off almost everybody I ever wanted to work with off my list, and at living anyway. And then you know, I got to the point where I never had monetary goals. I only had the goals of like, oh, I want to work with Kane Hodder, oh, I want to work with Lloyd Kaufman, oh, you know. Right. I never had that like, oh, I want to make a living. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I got older and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I met uh, my hero, which was John Beekler. He created uh, Troll, 
He made the Ghoulies. Okay. He directed Friday the 13th Part 7 and, and brought Kane Hodder to the part of Jason. And then uh, the thing is, is I talked to Beekler and I had kind of traced his footsteps. He's my idol. And he was a full moon guy that worked for Charles Band, my boss, for a long time. You gotta figure out something you can do that is going to make your family money, but you can still do full moon movies in your pastime for forever, whatever. Yeah. And uh, that's what made me, it was nine years before I opened this that he had said that. And it was, uh, that's what made me go home and go, you know what? I'm gonna build a monster museum. This over here is the original screen new Spider Gremlin. When I first opened this place, I thought it was going to be more like a Planet Hollywood where it would be screen use props, my collection mm -hmm. like that I had collected off eBay or from friends. Um, and then to open this place, I sold a lot of my collection, including like Pumpkinhead's legs and stuff that I had held dear to me. And then it was like, you know what? I will not put screen use stuff that I didn't make. So everything within the museum, once you walk through the doors, one of a kind work of art. I made everything in there. Um, some of it is screen use, and the rest is just homages to some great mm -hmm. characters. Right. But this is not actually owned by me. It's owned by a television magician named Michael Carbonero and Pete Stickles, uh, his partner. They asked if they could keep it here, and uh, it's the <laughs> it's the only one. There was two made for the movie, and one of them was burned during filming. So this is the actual two on trunk um, from the museum. And this was a really cool thing. So, uh, when we did Axis Termination, Charles Band, the creator of Puppet Master, said, mm -hmm. I need another trunk. How much would it cost you to build me one? And I said, I'll do it for nothing, but I get to keep it. <laughs> so, uh, this, has been, this has been in two films, Axis Termination and Blade the Iron Cross. This is now Toulon's official trunk. When they put out the Puppet Master box set, that all the discs come in the trunk. Mm -hmm. It's this trunk that they, they used all the artwork from. So, that was an awesome deal. And I remodeled it, of course, to look like the two famous Toulon puppet trunk with these shelves like that. Yeah. They're from Ikea. Nice. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's just awesome. It's got a hole in the back because at one point we had to uh, puppeteer a puppet from back there. Mm -hmm. So we, every creature in this place is in my vision of them. They're not all screen accurate. They're my take on that character, and, but this would be Nosferatu, clearly, and uh, one of the greatest silent films ever. Mm -hmm. um, in, like, the late 90s, maybe, uh, Typo Negative redid a score for the silent film, and it's beautiful. Uh, it's just awesome. I, I have some... The earliest story told of Dracula, basically, they tried to get the rights to Dracula, but the Stoker family wouldn't give them the rights. So they just changed some names and made the same movie. Mm -hmm. and, and there's this awesome lore where Maxwell Shrek, who played Graf Warlock, uh, was an actual vampire. And uh, nobody knows who did his makeup and he would only show up at night. And you look at things like Metropolis and you look at things like Nosferatu. Uh, mm -hmm. like, who, was, who was that far advanced back then? It's, but they made a movie in like 2006, I think, called Shadow of the Vampire, and Willem Dafoe plays him, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's all about that lore that he was a real vampire. Very, very cool movie. This image and this wall painting is all from a movie called the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, one of the, my favorite, hands down favorite silent films. Eventually I will sculpt the Caligari to stand right here, which mm -hmm. is just like a big guy in a trench coat. Uh, but. This movie is so important, especially for Tim Burton fans, because I think on purpose, I mean, it's not a secret that this movie is responsible for every bit of what Tim Burton does. All I think that you look at any Tim Burton movie and you can see Caligari and Nosferatu in there. Of course, The Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm. I am such a mega Lon Chaney fan. I mean, he basically created the art of special makeup effects uh, in American cinema. And he would do things like put wires in his eyes to hold them open and uh, the hunch from Hunchback he built out of plaster and he would really go through any length and he wasn't, he was an actor, um, not a, you know, not a makeup guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people say, they call him Man of a Thousand Faces and he was so, everything from Lenny from Mice to Men with no makeup all the way to Phantom or, or Hunchback, he took those roles so seriously and was able to contort and move and um, 
somehow make you feel everything happening in the movie. And a lot of people credit that to his parents were deaf mutes. So in his house growing up, that's how he expressed. He talked with his face and his hands. Mm -hmm. Right. Most of his film catalog has been lost forever because uh, after World War One or during World War One, they melted down a lot of the silent films for the nickel that was in the film to make stuff. And, um, so we lost. 90% of that man of a thousand faces, but, uh, but the ones that do survive are incredible. I can watch Phantom of the Opera and Hunchback in Notre Dame. I'll put them on when I go to bed or whatever. I mean, I can watch them. I know them so well. Sets in these silent films were insane too. Universal Studios, they finally, uh, the, the opera set burned down in 2013, but the Hunchback sets are still there. And you can, uh, Hunchback? Um, one of my favorite Universal Monsters, I'm going to say that about all the Universal Monsters, everyone, I'm like, one of my favorites, this is my favorite, this is my all-time favorite, because I love the Universal Monsters, the classic yeah. Universal Monsters, yeah. I love them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Hunchback in particular, my earliest segue into this world, I, I wanted to be a comic book artist, I love he-Man growing up, I, mm -hmm. I loved fantasy art, right. until on my 10th birthday I saw the Toxic Avenger, and Toxic Avenger changed my entire life, <laughs> and it changed my perception of, of how to create characters for comic books or, or eventually makeup effects in movies, yeah. right. and if you look at Toxie, he's so drastically inspired by Fuzzy Man, uh, yeah. he's droopy eyes, sunken yeah. lip, pushed up nose, and, but... Also, because these two are played by the same guy, I tried to add a very similar core texture, mm -hmm. very similar forehead wrinkles, just to tie them together a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he actually has Zoltar hands. That's a little known fact. Those are Zoltar That's hands. hands. That's awesome. Lugosi, mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest movie monsters of all time, although not hideously deformed or mm -hmm. anything like that, he just had such a presence and he was so dark and mysterious and evil. And what I love the most about Bella is he could do these huge movies. Dracula back in the day was huge. He mm -hmm. did the theater productions, all this. But then he could jump in his future career and do low budget cheap movies like White Zombie and take it as seriously. He never phoned in a performance. And I love that because I am a B-movie guy. I love B-movies. Mm -hmm. So many people know that Boris Karloff played the mummy and the Frankenstein monster, but so little people know or understand who Jack Pierce is. And Jack Pierce created the makeups for sure. Frankenstein's monster, the mummy, the wolfman. He designed Dracula. He was Universal's head guy, and he created so many classic characters. Yeah. You have to know Lon Chaney, Jack Pierce, uh, uh, John Chambers, Dick Smith, up to Tom Savini and Rick Baker. Like These are all important figures. And if the general public knows people like Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth, then, then we need to, if you're gonna enter a field of filmmaking in general, you should really know who these people are. Mm -hmm. The Frankenstein monster is, I think, almost every effects artist's favorite monster. Uh, the whole idea of the man who made a monster, we are those men that make monsters. And continuing the Universal Monsters, this is one of my favorites, like the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love, love, love the Wolfman. This Wolfman is one of two silicone characters we have in the museum. Okay. Uh, and the only reason he's silicone is because I made him the night before we opened. Uh, I had built this thing and I was like, oh, this is cool, it's very museum-ish. But then I had all these really cool figures of other Universal Monsters and I, I couldn't, I had to build a Wolfman. So I threw them together the night before we opened. And, and uh, Lon Chaney Jr., whose name was not actually Lon Chaney, it was Creighton Chaney. Uh, he was also supposedly an amazing makeup artist, but by the time he got to Hollywood, first they made him change his name to Lon Chaney Jr. They said, you won't work unless you do that. Mm -hmm. So he did, and then they didn't allow him to do his own makeup like they did his dad, because by that time the unions had come in, and Jack Pierce was the head of the makeup department at Universal. So he never, we never got to see what he could do could to you? himself, and I would, I would so love to see it. Um, I got to work with Sid Haig a couple times uh, before he passed away, and mm -hmm. he's the one person that I know that actually performed alongside Lon Chaney Jr., and he said he was so interesting. Um, we represent Alfred Hitchcock, of course. He's not a monster, but he did create one of 
the very earliest slasher films being Psycho, and then Vincent Price has played everything from the leading man hero to the villain. Uh, Vincent Price might be my favorite actor. Um, I absolutely love this. these are all all the life casts in here are real life casts of their faces. They're not sculpted. Mm -hmm. I I think Vincent Price was incredible. Uh, he did so much for the art. This museum couldn't exist if it weren't for him. Back in the I think it was late seventies, early eighties, there was a guy named Conrad, and uh, Conrad. He owned a place called the Witch's Dungeon. I don't know if his name was Conrad. In Massachusetts, where he made figures and made his own wax museum. And Universal was shutting him down because of likeness rights on the Frankenstein monster. And Vincent Price went to the Supreme Court and fought for arts and education that if, if this guy was not allowed to display his figures, then people would lose this to history. Like, we would not remember who did what and who played who and what they looked like. So this, I've said it already, but I'll say it for the real time. This is my favorite monster of all time. No, okay. between two of them. The Metal Luna Mutant from This Island Earth and Creature Black okay. Lagoon. And the craziest thing that I've found out about three years ago, uh, it's come to light in the last three to five years, is uh, the Metal Luna Mutant and the Creature Black Lagoon were created by the same person who was a female named Melissa Patrick. It was a known fact Bud Westmore made this monster until about three to five years ago and a book came out called Lady of the Black Lagoon that is incredible. And to find out she was not only the creator of Metal Luna Mutant and, and Creature of the Black Lagoon, which is so bizarre to me because these creatures are both burned in my brain as two of my biggest inspirations. Mm -hmm. And to come from the same brain, it, it is really enlightening. But she was also one of the first female animators for Walt Disney. One of the reasons that I love this figure in my museum so much is it's a complete one-off. Everything in here pretty much aside from this and Tar Man, mm -hmm. have molds, where if the whole place burned down, I can make it almost everything again. Uh, this has no molds. It's all constructed on the form. It's a one-of-a-kind piece of art. We spoke a little bit about yeah. the Bela Lugosi stuff, but my, you know, Ed Wood is, uh, he is the first Lloyd Kaufman. You know, there wouldn't have been, maybe there would have been, I don't think anything could have stopped Lloyd, but, <laughs> uh, but Ed paved the way for a low-budget, passionate directors and, um, and I, I got to meet Conrad Brooks one of the last surviving cast members and he told me that uh, the Tim Burton version of Ed Wood was a perfect depiction of what it was like. Mm -hmm. The Apes uh, single-handedly some of the most monumental films ever cinema history. Mm -hmm. uh, John Chambers who created the ape makeups changed the entire universe. There would be no Freddy Krueger, there would be no Hellboy. The Exorcist is one of everybody's favorite things. They think it's the uh, scariest movie of all time. I never thought it was that scary. No. I thought it was cool. I really like it. I think it's very cool. Her head used to spin around, but the motion sensor broke. So I apologize. It's fine. I was on this reality show called Face Off. Um, I was on season one. I made it on seven out of eight episodes. It was awesome. Such a fun experience. I was reminded today that it was 10 years ago that we shot it. Wow. Oh I can't believe it. It was a decade ago I was that like, I was I on the show. I can't even remember. It's been off for that long. I talk about this show almost every day. At first, when I first left, I got kicked off for this zombie with a tire tread through him that was beautiful. It was a wonderful piece of art. And Fangoria actually used this picture to advertise the show. Like, that's what I went home on. So I used to be real bitter because I thought I was going to win the show. I was statistically in the lead when I got kicked off. And, uh, and it built me this weird fan base of, of people yelling that you were robbed. So had I made it on that last episode and lost legitimately, I would have been a loser. But as a stand, I was robbed. <laughs> so it really worked out in my favor. Um, so much fun. I hope this show ends up on Netflix or Amazon Prime mm -hmm. where people can watch it for free because I would love the chance to build that that fan following up again. It's, it, it is such a great opportunity because I had no idea. I'm always talking about preserving the art and sharing this uh, thing, yeah. practical effect. Well, it wasn't until I opened this place that I understood that that show did that. They do their own face-off challenges. They send me all this fan art. <laughs> it's really cool. And I wish I would have been a little bit more humble when I came off and a little bit more like understanding that kids actually, kids and adults actually mm -hmm. cared about what we were doing. 
Um, but I, I'm real competitive and I want to win. Yeah. Do you still uh-huh. like keep in touch with any of all them? All yeah. of them? Okay. Every, well, I say all of them. There's two that I don't. <laughs> two people from my series that I don't talk to. And that's just because, eh, yeah. Yeah. Don't need to. Life. <laughs> but uh, a lot of them I do talk to, and they're great people. And other seasons, like I bump into people all the time. I did get sponsored by this airbrush company, which was a really cool opportunity. Uh, and that lasted about eight years. I had uh, all the airbrushes I ever needed. I had mm-hmm. a pro model that was really cool. And it fizzled out over time, but um, what a great opportunity. He's holding my head, too. It's like, oh, that's Easter <laughs> I made a little museum out of it for the next season or something. Yeah. You know? Like some of the stuff that comes off of that show, I was like, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And this is all, I recreated this. But this is a guy that I made on the show that did really well. And Sean Cunningham, who created Friday the 13th, was the guest judge. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I won pretty hands down on this one. So that's why we put him in here. It's really awesome. This is usually where the puppets live. <laughs> There's only a couple right now. This is a blade from Axis Termination. Mm-hmm. And that's a full animatronic blade. That's my dude. <laughs> that's like my, sp- I've said many in many interviews that Pinhead's my spirit animal. He's uh, definitely my favorite. You have to remember, Joy, I also grew up loving sideshows, so the fact that there was a pinhead, yeah. you know, it was just... <laughs> oh, and he was, he's tough, you know? Yeah. He was yeah. so cool. <laughs> yeah. When I took over the puppets, I gave him this real burly sweater because he used to wear kind of like a cloth. Like in that picture, it's just like mm-hmm. a cloth, cloth sweater. Yeah. I gave him this real tough sweater because I was like, he can't just be wearing that. <laughs> and uh, this is Poultry Guy stuff. Yeah. This is the screen used General Chicken Monster. When I pulled him out, he was in trash bags for like 10 years before we built this place. I pulled him out and I was going to restore it and I was like, no, you know what? (laughs) This looks like trauma. (laughs) It looks like trauma. So this was uh, Carl Jr.'s face and Mickey's face and that was Lloyd's Arby face. Mm -hmm. I got to get my head eaten by chicken nuggets in the movie. They like jumped through my face and eat me. (laughs) So cool. I was such a trauma fan. No, I'd cool. like to do another one. I really would. That's the poster that Doug gave me years yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty awesome experience. And mm-hmm. I think it's a great film. These are replicas. These are not... I, I used to sell these through Full Moon. These were not uh, screen used. I did the Killjoy movies, part three, four, and five, uh, with Trent Haga, who was a trauma guy, and then jumped to Full Moon. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, that was all. We made part three in uh, China. We flew to China to make it. It was incredible. Oh, yeah. Such a cool experience. And then four and five were both made uh, in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the director, John Lachago, is the guy who just did Blade the Iron Cross. Okay. He's a great director, good, good friend. And, and it was just so. It was cool because, like, I, I never had a Nightmare on Elm Street movie that I can call my own. But with the Killjoy trilogy that we did, like, I own that guy. That's my, yeah, these are yeah, my yeah, characters, characters, you know. So, uh, I, I love it. I love it. Particularly, part four was one of the coolest movies ever. What, three, why are they filming in China? Because Charles Band likes a good deal, and he got a heck of a deal oh. at a studio in China to do Puppet Master 9 and Killjoy 3. Mm-hmm. This is from... I used to do these asylum movies that were like knockoff movies. So yeah. When John Carter of Mars came out, we did Princess of Mars. When Terminators, Salvation came out, we did Terminators. You know, and that was the Battle of L.A. Yeah. We did Transmorphers and, you know, knockoffs. And then that changed into mega movies. So we started Mega Piranha. Uh, and this was Freak Show. Mm-hmm. It was modeled after the movie Freaks. Yeah. And mm-hmm. this was a really cool experience. And I thought that movie was going to be incredible when we were making it. And the edit's a little sloppy, and it's not incredible, but it's fun. That's a good move. I liked it. Oh, okay. And then Princess of Mars, I think, if I was 12 years old, that would have been my favorite movie. Because I love those crazy fantasy barbarian space movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beastmaster or whatever. Yeah. And that totally was that. And actually, closer to the source material than John Carter, the Disney one. Um, but Tracy Lords played uh, the Deja Thoris, the princess, and it was fun. It's really not fun. And uh, so I uh, I got away from them after a while, but I did probably 14 movies with those guys. I loved it. Like, I got my head cut off by Shaggy 2 Dope from ICP. Mm-hmm. A movie called Death Racers. I thought that was awesome. Um, but, yeah, Asylum. Mm-hmm. Ginger Dead Man is goofy full moon stuff. 
-hmm. My favorite artist ever, John Beekler, who I talked about earlier, created the original Ginger Dead Man. So to take the character over was very cool. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the movies that I was responsible for with Ginger Dead Man are not like it. <laughs> <laughs> evil Bonds. I did Evil Bond. Well, with Ginger Dead Man, I did Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bond. Then they used my Ginger Dead Man in Evil Bong 5 and 6, and then I did, or 4 and 5, and I did 6 and 7. And 7 we actually shot here in the museum, uh, which is fun. Like, it was a good little promo for the museum. Mm -hmm. Now, back when we first were living together, every Tuesday night was Blockbuster date oh, yeah. night. And I loved it because I miss it, it so like, much. I just missed the video store. Well, just, yeah, because I like like Netflix. You scroll, but I like being to pick up a case. Go, I never heard of this. Yeah, right. And look at it lie. and like tangibly. So, and and feel. I have a theory that that's the death of the cult classic because you would bring home a movie like Doctor Giggles, right? Mm -hmm. And you got it for two ninety nine, and you are committing that in that weekend you're gonna watch that damn movie before you bring it back. Yeah. All the way through. So even if there's a boring lull or something silly, you'll sit through it till the end, and then yeah. you'll see something so shocking at that end of that movie, and you'll be like, oh my god, or Sleepaway Camp. You see the end of Sleepaway Camp, and you're like, holy balls, and then you gotta show your friend. But on Netflix, or any streaming device, you start watching, eh, I'll find something else. Eh, there's no commitment. And so you don't build that cult classic. Yeah. Um, Chucky is uh, one of the earliest things that ever scared me. This is what scared me, not The Exorcist. Chucky. Mm -hmm. Because I had a Teddy Ruxpin that I loved dearly, and this thing <laughs> scared the piss out of me. Actually, I yeah. was terrified. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget watching part two at Brian Whipple's house and being so afraid to fall asleep and have a nightmare, my mom would find out I watched the movie. So, uh, yeah. So definitely. What was your first horror movie that you can remember watching? Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street was the first. It was on USA Network and I recorded it because I want, I, I loved horror before I saw it, mm -hmm. like, but I didn't understand it. So I called like Jason, Chainsaw Jason, because I knew from Haunted Houses, he always had a chainsaw, yeah. the hockey mask. <laughs> so I kind of combined Leatherface and Jason. But when Nightmare on Elm Street came on USA Network, I recorded it and I wrote He-Man and Shiro's Christmas special on the tape so my mom would never watch it. <laughs> the early 90s that I really delved into this stuff. Um, Child's Play was early for me. That Child's Play 2 trailer where he's like, watch out, Jack, Chucky's back. <laughs> Holy cow, I was, that just lit me up. It was so scary. Mm -hmm. That's And then on my 10th birthday, when I saw Toxic Avenger, I was having a Toxic Crusader birthday party. My uncle brought a tape of Toxic Avenger and was like, hey, I'll show you something you never saw. I'm going to keep your parents distracted. Yeah. You guys watch this. And we're 10. <laughs> and this is a full moon movie that I just did. And the display is almost done. There's one more character that's going to go here. And it's like a snake tail that'll wrap around. And there'll be a poster and we'll do an information card. But this is called Ouija's Halloween Night. It, this was one of my favorite films I've ever worked on. Um, because of the nature of just these goofy rubber monsters, all of them had animatronic eyes, and that's like a movable face. Mm -hmm. They were just so fun. Maniac Cops, one of my favorite slasher films of all time. Being from New York, you should appreciate that. Uh, Matt Cordell, um, Robert Zadar played him. He passed away. When he passed away, I sculpted this as a homage. But So They Live, a great John Carpenter movie. Not much to say about it except for it's real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe every bit of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love They Live, and it's one of those things that's scary. I mean, it's scary to think about oh, yeah. because I, I do full heartedly believe in it. We just don't have Roddy Piper to save us anymore. I, <laughs> I got to work with him before he passed away. Oh, that's and awesome. I hung out in his trailer with him and his son, and he told me so many great stories about making They Live. and. So Killer Clowns from Outer Space, yep. the Kyoto Brothers who made those also made The Critter. Uh, one of my favorite artists, it's a group of brothers. Mm -hmm. And when I called them when I was like 19, when I first got to LA, I was like, I'll sweep your floor, I'll do anything. And uh, they told me, go back to Pennsylvania and go to college, find a real job because computers are going to take over our, our industry. But I think that shorty is my, maybe my favorite sculpt I've ever done. I did it for Trick or Treat Studios, they're a Halloween mask company called Trick or Treat Studios. Yeah. Yeah. I sculpted both of these for them. I just, I love that shorty mask. No, that's this cool. was definitely one of my my top ones. Oh. I made him watch it. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It's so it's great. good. <laughs> the kind. 
candy. Yeah. <laughs> I did. So both of these costumes we did for Halloween costumes. I was shorty, and my wife was pregnant, and she was pregnant. <laughs> And then our daughter, we made her a little cotton candy cocoon. So the Toxic Avenger, as I already stated, was responsible for my entire career. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite little Easter eggs that I have uh, figured out is this Toxic Avenger 2 poster I've had forever. It was actually signed to somebody named Julian, and I crossed that out and wrote my own name years ago. But uh, I was sitting staring at it one time, and I realized this body is He-Man's body. That's his shield hand and his sword hand. And John Carpenter's Halloween is uh, clearly one of the coolest slasher films. A lot of people think it's the first, but it's totally not. Um, you know, Black Christmas came before it, and of course Psycho, and even Texas Chainsaw Massacre was really the first masked, uh, you know, lunatic or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the Michael Myers is so prominent, and there's just something about that. Uh, we actually had a couple propose to each other on the steps. <laughs> you know, it's one of those characters, love him or hate him, a lot of people think he's silly and stupid. I love the Leprechaun, and that's just from the time that I first saw it, and uh, the her stores in the Leprechaun 2 definitely run deep in my world, and uh, Gabe Bartalos, who sculpted the Leprechaun, I, I've taken a lot of his style that's very similar to mine, that big ropey, deep cut in um, sculptures. So. Freddy would be our second silicone character. Almost everything in here is latex and polyfoam, uh, but the Wolfman and, and Freddy are silicone. Um, I think Freddy Krueger is probably one of the most, well, Nightmare on Elm Street 1 it might be one of the most terrifying horror films because it felt so real as a kid that you can, you know, face your fears like that in your nightmares. <laughs> I loved when I was a kid uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare too. Mm -hmm. When he came back, back. yeah, and I, yeah. I absolutely loved it. It hasn't aged really well, but at the time I was like, look at that trench coat, and this is so cool. You know? <laughs> this is the only thing in the museum I didn't make. That's a store-bought scream ghost, and that's because it's a store-bought yeah. scream. Right? Yeah, why not? Right? <laughs> this is actually my original scream mask. I had three years before the movie came out. One, it was just a Funland mask, yeah. and. Uh, it's cool because the cloth is actually like t-shirt material. It's a little bit bigger. So it's just a little bit different, but I had that thing forever. This is our Camp Crystal Lake. This is the oldest figure in the museum. I started building this when I was in ninth grade, I think. Um, so it finally got finished when we opened, but uh, that thing's like 25 years in the making. Mm -hmm. This is Tar Man from Return of the Living Dead. Also, uh, very similar to the Creature of Black Lagoon, this is a one-off. Me and my daughter made this when she was four. That's and, awesome. And it'll last forever, and that's the coolest thing. Like, there's no mold. Nobody else can have this. Mm -hmm. So someday it can be hers. She can do whatever she wants with it. Texas Chainsaw is my one of those movies that's so special to me. Like the Toxic Avenger, like... Friday 13th Part 4 is my favorite Friday. Okay. Um, and then I love Texas Chainsaw Part 1. I think it's one of the greatest horror films ever. That's the first autograph I ever got. Uh, and uh, that really set me on my path of horror collecting and wanting to, you know, be a part of this world. This was the first one that ever scared me. Yeah, this is terrifying. I, I just remember because there was a horror award show on network TV. Yeah, when the Chainsaw it, we were, Awards. We were, I remember being a kid. And it was sponsored by Fangoria. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And they told about. you how to make like vampire teeth using uh, <laughs> Starburst and like weird stuff. And I'm like, Dad, can we rent this movie? He's like, it's going to scare you because I remember being young. And we put it on right when the guy slits his, the, the guy's hand. I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is a lot scarier than, it was so real. Like I was like. <laughs> well, it's got that documentary feel to it. Yeah. It's, we've had Ari who played Leatherface in part three out here to the museum. We do like celebrity signings every other month. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this will always be my Pennywise. Like I grew up on this miniseries. I've watched it probably 150,000 times. One of my favorite things is that it was rated G essentially. It was made for television and it scared an entire generation of, of kids. And people watch it now and they think it's campy or boring or whatever. Mm -hmm. But Tim Curry was so effective as that character. Romero, as I said, I give this guy so much props. The uh, the thing is, is we don't know when the first tale of a vampire came, and we don't know the first tale of a werewolf. 
We do know that zombies were Haitian voodoo monsters before George Romero made the flesh-eating zombie. He stayed in Pittsburgh and made zombie movies most of his life. I mean, he made other stuff too, but all independent, all outside the unions, super punk rock. He shot Night of the Living Dead, one of the most influential horror films, on equipment he borrowed from Mr. Rogers. Um, so these are just some of my, these aren't specific zombies, but they're just, mm -hmm. they actually move. Like these are props that I make for haunted houses and they like move and do stuff. Uh, um, yeah, Bruce from Evil Dead series and uh, uh, of course the Ash vs. Evil Dead. <laughs> my wife my wife and I made a movie called Legend of the Sand Squatch and we used that hand in the last shot of the movie stick it yeah. in the dirt in the same way so it's a, just one of those things it's like a and, and it's actually a screen used prop from the movie yeah. and it was just Bruce's <laughs> hand so I think that that's pretty, pretty funny and it happens to be the same hand that went evil on him mm -hmm. uh, that is the exact same chainsaw that's on the cover of the first movie but not the same chainsaw that's in part two that's mounted to his hand. I just made it look like it. Mm -hmm. And then we tell everybody to please leave us a review on Yelp or TripAdvisor because that helps our entire lifeblood. Oh, yeah. That's what people look at when they come to Vegas. So this is uh, where most of the magic happens is right here. Um, this is, uh, I always show people, this is when I start getting down on what I'm doing. These were all my Puppet Master toys from when I was a kid. And those are the ones that I make. And this was a Zoltar head I did called Zoldog. He had six eyes. <laughs> he was awesome. It's for a brewery called La Kenyatta's Brewery. You guys didn't even see this. So hey. I didn't brew it at all. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, this is a, from the new Blade movie. These are some of the Blade puppets. So this is, I made him huge, because it's his own movie. I felt like he needed yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Chucky status, you know. Uh, and this is a full animatronic, 18 servos. Uh, he, he's got everything, robotic, and all of That's his awesome. arms. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we call this action blade. It's essential punching nun <laughs> that, I, that I bastardized and uh, I made action like and <laughs> um, then Blade gets burnt up this is a spoiler Blade gets like charred crispy it's pretty much one of my favorite movies for Full Moon I've done mm -hmm. these are all the screen used puppets from the others this is Tunneler. Mm -hmm. He's all beat up. All of these guys are beat up. He's got like a rod that goes through his butt so you can turn his head. And this is a awesome. It's kind of broken right now. This is an animatronic of Pinhead. So he's fully mm -hmm. anim animated. And he could like do push ups and all kinds of cool stuff, grab people. But so you said you went to Florida to learn about the animatronics. Do you do the animatronics? Yeah, I built, uh, this is my animatronic room in here. I didn't go there to learn. I just decided so I, while I was there, I was gonna, that, that was my new career. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching myself, just like I teach myself makeup. But it's just a lot of like radio control mm -hmm. type stuff. And as long as you can figure out the linkage or whatever, it, uh, it all works out. This is a Ouija eyes for for one of the Ouija's. Mm -hmm. Like this, so, like if I have a skull, like this, I can make it talk with a microphone or whatever, or I can record audio tracks that'll make it actually talk. I like this guy over here too. You know who that is? He looks like from the Rock Fire Explosion. It is, that's Billy Bob. Yeah. That's Billy Bob's face. Me and my wife have the exact same memory. She grew up in Indianapolis, I grew up in New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. Yeah. And uh, we have the same memory of going to a Chuck E. Cheese after the the takeover mm -hmm. and being like, wait, these are fake. <laughs> like, this isn't real. Because <laughs> we both believed so hardcore in the Rock of Fire. And yeah. When we saw Chuck E. Cheese stuff, it was like, oh, they're, they're <laughs> animated props. I get it. Um, 
Billy Bob and Fats. Those are the two that I liked the best, and I didn't have either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are I make these guys. They just uh, hold signs and move signs. <laughs> Spinny plate on them. Yeah. <laughs> It'll hold, this is like his frame. And he just kind of does this. <laughs> we have one out front, but it just broke. I gotta fix it. There's a bar downtown in Vegas called the Thunderbird Saloon. And I made a Johnny Cash there that you stick a dollar and you can sing karaoke with him. And he plays his guitar like this and he sings and, and you can pick up a mic and sing with him. And there's an amp like yeah. his guitar is that your voice comes out of. And I love that weird stuff, you know. Yeah, it's no, definitely. Uh, it's cool. And the whole thing with the museum and this stuff is it's immediate gratification because people come out of that museum and they're like, "Oh, I love this, and I used to love They Live, and I love this, and I love yeah. that." Amazing, 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 amazing experience. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. Really cool. Just got back to our hotel room from Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. That was an amazing experience. Um, I'm very happy I got to meet the guy and see his museum. We have common friends through the Troma Movie Company. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first heard of Tom Devlin's Monster Museum, I was like, this sounds interesting. I like horror movies. Joy loves horror movies. We should go see this. And it was nothing. Like, I knew what to expect, but I loved it so much. Didn't disappoint at all. Mm -mm. Amazing. Doing the experience where Tom takes you around, shows you his museum, talks about stuff, talks about how he built stuff, the movies, people that inspired him. Incredible experience. I... I can't be happier like we, we came to vegas for something for joy and this was something i wanted to do very badly mm -hmm. and i think it became one of joy's favorite things we did here too is joy's not gonna go <laughs> joy tell me what did you think of the museum it was great i mean i would definitely sell my soul to go back again oh you will oh huh. <laughs> that could be arranged lady I know uh, someone that will make a deal, and that someone is me. One soul for more time at Tom Devlin's Monster Museum? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. He even gave me this mask. Because <laughs> I said that one of my sideshow characters is like a clown devil character, and he's like, huh. And I was talking about building a devil shrine, and we were talking about, he's like, I have one of those plastic devil masks. I'm like, oh. he's like, I'll give it to you. I'm like, like score. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't know. Words cannot describe how incredible this was. You just watch the video. I mean, like it says, it speaks for itself. You should come. One hundred percent. Here, it's in Boulder City, Nevada, and go to Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. Like that's all I can say. Yes. It's. Oh. You like horror movies? Cool. You know, like old school, like black and white Universal stuff. Cool. You like the idea of. Practical effects and movie makeup. Cool. All those re things, reasons go. You like movies in general. Cool. Go. Yeah. So just go. What are By you waiting way, for? Get there. Now. You still watch it? Let's go. Oh, we have to say, we have to say bye. That's why oh. still watch it. Bye. Go. No, 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 no. So, <laughs> Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. Been there, done that. Remember, folks, safe travels. Good eat. And live life. Now go. Go. You know, and he could stab you. It's swipe. You know, he, it, punching none blade is the best. <laughs>